All right. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope everybody had a great weekend and that you are ready for week two of uh, learning from home. And today we're going to be talking about uh, special segments in a circle and your essential question is going to be how can I find chord segment lengths located inside a circle How can I find chord segment lengths located inside of a circle? And let's get this written down. When two chords intersect inside a circle, Each chord is divided into two segments. Those two segments are called chord segments. Chord segments. So let's get a diagram of that. It's as simple as a circle with a chord and another chord. Alright? And if chord AB intersects chord CD at point E then what you've got here is four chord segments and the rule related to these chord segments states that if two chords intersect inside a circle then the products of the chord segments are equal. If two chords intersect inside a circle, then the products of the chord lengths of the chord segments are equal. So what that means is that segment AE times segment EB is going to be equal to segment CE times segment ED. And you're going to use that rule to solve for variables today and to find chord segment lengths as they relate to circles. So here we go with some example problems. And we are going to be finding the value of x in these problems. And our first problem looks like this. Circles aren't very, very good, but I just don't have the patience to wait for this software to draw them for me. All right, straight up, we got a segment of 5 and a segment of 12. 
we got a segment that's X units long and then a segment that's 10. So here's your setup, your X times 10. So we got X times 10 is going to be equal to 5 times 12. And X times 10 is equal to 10X. And 5 times 12 is equal to 60. So we can divide both sides by 10. And X is equal to 6. All right, the product of the chord segments are equal to each other. <laughs> All right, so here's our segments in this problem. We've got a segment that is X plus 10 units long a segment that is x plus one units long, a segment that is x units long, and finally an x plus eight units long. So in this problem, again, the chord segments, the products of the chord segments are equal. So what we've got is an x plus one times an x plus eight that's equal to and x plus 10 times x. So we're going to be doing some distributive property this week and uh, on the left hand side of this equation you can see that we have to do the distributive property twice. So when we start to distribute we're going to distribute this x. So x times x is x squared and x times 8 is positive 8x 1 times x is 1x, and 1 times 8 is positive 8. On the right hand side, we're going to distribute as well. So we've got the x times x again, which is x squared, and then we've got positive 10 times x is positive 10x. Alright, so now let's kind of, uh, we're going to combine a couple steps into one right here. If we've got an x squared on each both sides of the equation. They cancel each other out. Make sure that they're both, they both have the same sign. They're either both got to be positive or they both got to be negative. All right, in this case, they're both positive x squared, so they cancel each other out. So then we've got an 8x plus a 1x, and that gives us 9x plus 8 on the left hand side and 10x on the right hand side. So if we subtract 9x from both sides, then 8 is equal to 10x minus 9x is 1x and we don't write the 1 so x is equal to 8 in this problem here we go again segment that is six and a four X and 15 so we've got a four times a 15 or let's get the I'm gonna write the X first we got a six times an X so we got six six times X which is equal to four times 15 all right, our six times x is six x. Our four times 15 is 60. And if we divide by six, we've got x equal to 10. All right, one more example for today. Now, the same rule would apply if you had something that looked like this, okay? If you've got a secant and a segment and they both intersect inside the circle, the same rule is going to apply. So we've got here, we've got a segment that's x plus 6. 
and x plus 2. We've got a x and x plus 12. All right, so I'm going to do these more vertical segments first. So we've got a x times an x plus 12 equal to x plus 6 times x plus 2. So distributive property on the left, our x times x is x squared. And our x times positive 12 is positive 12x. And on the right hand side we've got x times x first, which is x squared. We've got x times 2, x times positive 2, which is positive 2x. We've got positive 6 times x, which is positive 6x. And we got positive 6 times positive 2, which is positive 12. Alright, so another example of an x squared on both sides of the equation. So we're going to cancel it out. On the left hand side we've got a 12x left. And on the right hand side we have to combine like terms first. So our 2x plus 6x is an 8x. And a positive 12 stays with it. So now we can subtract 8x from each side. 4x would be equal to 12, and we can divide both sides by 4. These 4s will cancel out, and our x is equal to 3. Alright, so the concept in this lesson is not very difficult, and I think where you'll run into difficulty if you run into any at all is in your double distributive property and being very careful when you combine like terms. Um, I would definitely look through your work multiple times before you submit your answers to your focus questions. So that's going to conclude the lesson for today. And, you know, we're following the same routine as we did in the classroom. So your assignment for each day is to, the first thing you need to do each day is to, you know, get the YouTube notes. Okay, and after you get the YouTube notes like you just did, you're going to go back through your notes. Okay, review your notes. Review and highlight the notes. Maybe go back to the practice problems okay and on a clean sheet of paper just write down the problem and then work the problem and then compare your answer to your notes and when you're completely sure how to do each of the example problems then I want you to do these practice problems alright so the next step in your assignment would be to complete the practice problems And then finally, you can answer your focus question or your essential question. And after you've done all of that, you've reviewed and highlighted your notes, you've completed the practice problems, you've double checked your work, you've answered the essential questions, the last thing to do each day is going to be to check focus. And you're checking focus for practice problem questions okay so keep in mind you typically spend uh, 48 or 49 minutes a day in the classroom and you should be spending time outside of class working on geometry so you should be spending 60 minutes a day minimum in your geometry class right now and what I mean by that is reading the notes watching the videos highlighting your notes, answering the essential question, and then rereading it, maybe edit it, and maybe really work on your answer to the focus question, and then check focus. So hopefully we're going to spend the same amount of time learning remotely as we would in the classroom, plus a little bit of extra time outside of the classroom. So with all that being said, 
here's your practice problems for Monday. All right, and in all of these problems, you're going to be finding the value of x. All right, those are your six practice problems for today. Hope everybody has a great day, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.